Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's Talkie Box, and it's our 100th... No, not 100th. I made that yeah, up. Yeah, it's not it's 100th. Our, it's our one-year anniversary. One our year. 100th year anniversary! <laughs> Everybody knows that uh, one year is 100. Um, <laughs> Something. Talkie Boxes. Talkie we box. did it. Dave, yeah. we did it. One whole year, yeah. and we haven't killed Jason yet. Right? Like, the urges have been <laughs> strong, but we managed. Yeah. We managed. Here's to another year of not killing Jason. With our empty cups. Yeah. Yes. That, that's his cup, by the way. Oh. <laughs> this, is, this is not my cup. This is what you were drinking your, your juice out of. Well, then you, nipping, drink, you nipping, drink your juice. Nipping on the juice. Yeah. So, uh, in celebration of this, I did get us some, some cheap, 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 cheap champagne. Nice. So, I got this here. All right. <clears throat> this is... Uh, oh, that's cold. It is. I had it in the fridge for the past like nine hours. I thought you were gonna just serve us some some bootlegged. No, stole it out there's, the gas there's station. A, there's a minuscule amount of class involved with talking. I wasn't sure okay. if maybe you got involved so, with the parkour ninjas. No, no, no. Are we gonna make our one year episode drunky box? I mean, that depends on how much of this bottle we finish in the hour. Um, well, I say we get started. But this is uh, this is Cook Spumante. I could have gotten the five dollar bottle of of cheap 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 champagne. Uh, I went a little bit above that eight dollar bottle. Ooh, okay, because because you guys are my friends. Spender. So you were you were looking over the the inventory, uh -huh. and you were like, "All right, cheapest thing they got. Whoa, five dollars. <laughs> uh, I feel bad. <laughs> like, we're better than that. I will be honest. It like the bottle looks better with the five dollar bottle. Well, we're gonna it be was very four dollars and fifty cents worth of bottle. Camera. <laughs> we can't hit the camera. We can't hit the monitor. I mean, aim aim. Right at Jason's face? Uh, yeah, I mean, right there. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you could hit the camera, I think that'd be pretty awesome. I mean, for the viewer. Right. <laughs> it's like 3D. Mm -hmm. Just come right at your face. Just or put like your, uh, your, yep. your Google glasses on. Your Google glasses, yeah. Your, your Google right, goggles. Let's, let's see how this goes. Your... Let's not also ruin the microphone. <gasps> oh. Right? That was nice and You didn't fancy. even let it shoot off. No. I, I think that was probably a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, I... Jason was asking earlier what spumante is about. It's, what's uh, what's spumante about? Cook's, Cook's spumante is a sweet Italian style sparkling wine with outstanding fruit flavors and a long, smooth finish. Smooth. Uh, Cook's tradition of exceptional sparkling wines began in 1859. Blah blah blah. I don't care. Um, there's this like line, and it shows like from dry to sweet. And spumante is not as sweet as moscato, but it's sweeter than everything else on the line. Hmm. Okay. So uh, moscato is super gonna... sweet. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Moscato, actually. Uh, I think it's made from muscadines. Oh, yeah? I didn't know that. I don't know. That, that makes that. sense. Ooh, right? A little bubbly. All right. All right. I washed them out Okay, before. is that water yeah. in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, not I made, like, literally, It's not our <laughs> As you're walking in the door, I was washing them out. I'm going to need right. more of that. Mine did not chop off here. I feel like we're going to so need to bubbly. finish this bottle. You know, no. Allow me. <laughs> you're going to... Ah. We did a year, guys. A whole year. Like 365 days of talkie box. Yeah. I mean, we only did it. Uh, this is episode 47. like 47. <laughs> <laughs> so 47 but, out of 365 days, yeah. we were bringing entertainment to our delightful right. viewers. 47 out of 52 weeks. So we only missed like five five episodes that we would have had. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't want every week. We are very. I, I think with all of our content, God. we are we are halfway to. Uh, there's there's uh, barely three mugs in this. Three, not even three <laughs> mugs. But I think we're halfway you to a hundred hours. Drink yeah. it out of a flute, right? A flute glass, right? Yeah. Not not typically out of a of a talkie mug. Hear that bubbly? <laughs> and uh, this also sounds like somebody peeing for the homies. That's not bad. Uh, it's not good, but it's not bad. We've had a lot of help on Talkie Box, so I'd we like have. to go ahead and, and salute them as well. I was actually going to do it by name. Uh, Brian, yeah. Elena. Yeah, I got this. Right. I wrote them down. So oh, you wrote them get. down? Because yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just going to thumb them out. Um, <laughs> first of all, we got uh, Skylar and Matt, uh, two great guys who provide a lot of our equipment. Um, the microphones and, and headphones and stuff that we've used, the board, the computer and stuff that we record through. Uh, we couldn't have done this without them, or we could have. We, no one would have heard it. <laughs> mm. um, it would just be us <laughs> yelling in the living room like yeah. normal. Right. Um, Tony, Mike, Jarrett, and Honor have all uh, worked behind the scenes for us. That's true. Uh, working the boards, working research, and stuff like that. Mm. So we really appreciate. Generally, you guys. once ever, <laughs> they, they, they get behind the scenes one time, yeah, and once. they're like, 
this is horrible. Yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> These guys are awful. They're just awful. I can't <laughs> listen to them for a whole right. hour. Um, <clears throat> thank you for listening but to us for a whole hour. Thank you for listening and for supporting us we really in any it. form or fashion. On the show, we've had several guest, uh, guest stars, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make that face. Someone, someone worked hard on this. Um, someone worked on it. <laughs> on the show, we've had uh, Emily, Destiny, Mickey, Joey, and and Tech. Yeah, all beautiful people. All beautiful to people. to offset what we've got going right. on. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we really appreciate all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Tech lasted the longest, right? Yeah. So like far, yeah. Four, four or yeah. five episodes. He's our most veteran. Mi- Mickey. Well, Mickey, Tech, and, and Joey all had like you know a bunch of episodes. Going yeah, they, 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 I they, think they're, Joey they're and Mickey are around the same amount. Yeah. I think Tech might have them beat though. I think yeah, Emily by an had, episode what, three or, or two. Or four? Yeah. I think tech was the most long-lasting. We are going to certainly uh, the most recent. Yeah, <laughs> certainly the most recent. Yeah. We are going to announce him as a permanent fixture. And then but as you can up. see, <laughs> he's not here. Yeah. So uh, another one bites the dust. And then the the other last two people I want to mention are um, uh, Brian and Elena, uh, who have been our our kind of IT people. Throughout. Oh my god, Elena, uh, Elena was a big part. She's actually the one who got us TalkieBox.net and oh, yeah. built our very first. That's why I started our, our with first, them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to really emphasize that they've been great. And then S and Brian, who's who's been just a massive help mm-hmm. throughout. And this May actually thing. liked the show. I'm not sure. I thought he was just <laughs> pitied us, and right. like he's a family member of yeah, yours, yeah. and so he was like, ah. I think that's what I'll it was at first, him. and then but there's so many times we're like, this part is really funny, and then he would make the clips for us and everything. He's like, and they, you so know. to some small degree. He's a fan. He must enjoy it. Yeah. And God bless you. And we really oh, appreciate it. Because like, he does his, his actual job, which you know is something important, and then and then helps his us out. His own likes and hobbies, I'm right. sure. And then and then helps us out like immensely, you know, putting stuff out there. And so we, we couldn't have done this without virtually all the people I named. And you know, like when, then, when you talk about all of the things that Brian has done that I appreciate from, you know, helping with the Twitter account. Mm-hmm. To helping with the Facebook page, I, th- I don't think there's anything that I appreciate more from Brian than the puppy and dog videos he posts to his personal Facebook. <laughs> they warm my day every single yeah. time. So yeah. thank you for that, Brian. Yep. And then thank you guys too, uh, Jason and Justin, and and I'm Dave. I, we didn't we didn't do introductions yet. I'm Jason. Yeah, that's Jason. This is I'm Justin. Justin. Yeah, and uh, you know you guys have been here from the beginning of this, and and I I certainly appreciate you guys showing yeah, up. I think. We've Every each week. only missed one episode apiece. Yeah. I mean, I feel partially responsible for the show because I tried to make you feel it's guilty. Yeah, you, as you pushed me possible. a lot to, to, to get this going. And, and we finally, we were actually together when we picked up the equipment down in Florida mm-hmm. yep. to actually get this and going. And I remember so. at least once a week, I was like, hey, remember that college degree you got? <laughs> huh? Wouldn't you like to put it to use in yeah. some capacity? You know, everybody had their contributions. We yeah. all pitched in one way or another. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you got us all the, the, the foam that's up here. And yeah, he's like our that. sugar like, daddy. I yep. think you actually bought these mugs. Also, I, I did, and also the the name Talkie Box. Yeah, you, that you was something we all kind of worked yeah, out, worked on. Uh, I just thought it sounded. Catchy. It was just kind of a one off thing, like, oh, like on the Talkie Box. Box. Oh, yeah. You know what? That doesn't have. In a case anybody was wondering where the name Talkie Box come from, it just like Justin blurted it out one day. Yep, just and I was like that's the name. Blanky John. blank, and then I wouldn't hear anything else. <laughs> Blanky blank. I think the biggest argument we had was how we were going to spell it. Yeah. And because of that, we've been able to create a running gag with a themed, like, donkey booth. And, like, right, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know. We all bring our talkie topics. Yep. We are, we are officially planning the talkie Olympics. That's true. We're going to do that next summer, as, as the plan. Uh, we have nothing in stone. <laughs> nothing in stone. All we have are the few events that we really want to do. So, what we're thinking is we're going to compile a list of all the events and we're going to let you. Our viewers and loyal listeners sign up for whatever event you would like, yep. and we're just going to have a big old fun day in a park or a warehouse or somewhere that'll have us backyard for... or something. It'll be great. Any place that'll give us a deal. <laughs> Deals, <laughs> those are the best. Yeah. So, very excited about that. A lot, a lot of things coming up this year. I think, or in the in the next coming year, um, we have a lot of new things we're working on. We're still working on Chupacabra Kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> We would like to continue like to work to on Juba Cover Kid. Um, <laughs> other, we have other videos planned that we yep. want to do, like not just the podcast. Because uh, one thing I've always, I've always said about this is like Talkie Box is not the company. Talkie Box is the show that we do. 
Mm-hmm. And while I don't have a name for the company yet because I'm lazy, I think Donkey um, Booth. <laughs> Donkey Booth. <laughs> Donkey Booth Inc. Like I want, I want to do more than just this show, and and we and we started doing that, like with Chupacabra Kid and with yep. you know uh, the face mask thing. And, you know, we have a new video that we're going to be putting up probably sometime next that's week. That's true. We do the the um, handshake video. Yeah, we, yeah. That was our first uh, our first venture into something different. Not this. Yeah. <laughs> so. But we have more stuff planned. We have we have uh, things probably written down somewhere that we're going to do. We may have promised you that we were going to go to a corn maze. We might still do that. I'm still pushing. <laughs> you know, there's only so much guilt I can lay down before they're just they just tune me out. Yeah. Um, maybe we can do it next week. Maybe we can. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, you know, occasional talkie box, we didn't meet last week. Right. And that was because Dave. I went to the fair. Went to the fair. Yeah. I get one day off a week from day job. And it's Tuesday, which is when we shoot this show. Mm -hmm. And uh, some friends and I wanted to go to the fair. And I was like, the only time I can go is on Tuesday, I guess. So I canceled Talkie Box. The first time I've I've done that for myself, I think. Where I'm like, there's something I want to do. And I'm fucking doing it. So. Selfish bastard. But so you went. I went to the fair. I had a really good time. At least regale us with... With the tales of the fair. What rides did, did you ride? I, the what? only ride I did was we did the Sky Buckets, which is uh, at the, the fair in Cumming, Georgia. Uh, the fairgrounds there have... It, it's not even part of the fair, really. It's just something that's always there. Mm-hmm. And it's these... It's like a gondola... or not, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of? Sky Buckets. Sure, Sky Buckets. A Ferris um, wheel? No. Sky Buckets. Yeah, Sky... It, it Basically, it goes from one side of the fair to the other. Okay. Kind of, kind of like a ski lift sort of thing. Um... Like I at Stone you. Mountain, when you're too lazy to climb the mountain, the cable right. cars. and you get in the sky bucket. No, what? No, <laughs> cable cars is something they have in like San Francisco. The trolleys, but it's on cables, right? Mm. Cable buckets. You're a cable bucket. So yeah, that was the only ride we. Had. Mostly we just kind of walked around. Tech was there actually. Uh, he was not in some other state like he is right now. Um, but yeah, there's a group of like five of us that went and we had a good time. We walked around. We saw like a diving show. Which was put on by some fire department, apparently, and like rescue diving. No, it like... was like like high dives kind of stuff. Hmm. Where they like climb up this tiny ladder and jump off this tiny platform, and you know you're you're really impressed because you know they didn't die. Okay, that is impressive. Yeah, watching people not die <laughs> when they could be dying. When they could be dying. Yeah, I personally enjoyed my most recent experience with not dying when I could be dying. With the uh, your head thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we saw it. That was fun. <laughs> you enjoyed that, huh? That oh yeah, it was, it was. It was the the best part was not dying. Right. Yeah, that episode was released this morning. I watched it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I finally got up. The thing about that, we did that in your basement, and yep. the sound there, like it's an awesome setup that we had, but, but very the sound was so hard to work with. And so uh, Brian was actually finally able to get that up this morning, and you know, so go yep. check it out if you haven't already. Popcorn, funnel cake, funnel cake. Chili dog. I had, not, I had, I had phone cake. I had uh, uh, deep fried Oreo. Deep fried Oreo. Ooh, yep. those things um, hurt your teeth. They're so good. And uh, I had some uh, candied apple. I shared a candied apple with a friend. And their lemonade there is awesome and expensive as shit. Okay. So <laughs> like you, six bucks for a lemonade. So you rode one ride, which uh-huh. was not really even a fair ride, but just like a ride across right. the fair to like better get a scope of the fair. Mm-hmm. And then you had some delicious snacks. Yep. Uh, and you saw a dive show. Yeah. And oh, there's also a uh, a Native American village that they have there. You can walk down to and see like the crafts and stuff that they have. That's mostly what we did. Is kind of like look around. Is there anybody role playing? Uh, at the Native American village. I mean, like white people as Native Americans. Well, that I what mean, you're talking about? No, I mean, no. Like there was actual Native Americans there who were like talking about their culture and and dances and stuff that they do. Yeah, would that oh. be considered um, red face? I think it'd probably be best for you to stop <laughs> while you're ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going into this with you. All right. I mean, of all the horrible things, at least I am horrible. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, we didn't. Uh, we didn't really ride any, much of the rides. Uh, one of the people I was with has a uh, motion sickness issue, yeah. so we weren't. We weren't able to do yeah, a see, lot. Now, so. now, I don't really. I don't really trust fair rides too much. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, you think about amusement park rides, mm-hmm. and the, they're permanent fixtures. Mm-hmm. They get tested every day at the beginning of the day, and the end of the day. Um, and even they still sometimes have issues. Right. So the idea of a ride that's going to, you know, 
bring me up three stories into the air it's or just bolted into a cow patty somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the fact that I can see its wheels mm-hmm. and like how it folds up like a transformer. You're, does you're it judging a book by the, its cover here though. Like I am judging a book by its cover. It's very grimy, I mean, busted is, ass cover. But like <laughs> how often do you actually hear about something bad happening on those things? Not very often. See? But either way. I, I can tell you from the lines I saw, people are going on them. Oh, I know they are. <laughs> I mean, J- Jason and I went to that fair, what, two years ago? Yeah, I believe we went, so. We maybe the, maybe the Gravitron, not a sponsor. But the idea of getting in one of the Ferris wheels or one of those giant... Kind of like Ferris wheels, only you're in a cage and you're just yeah, yeah. spinning. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm going to go. I'm going to ride the rides. Yeah. And I'm kind of unsure why someone that has motion issues would go to a themed park where like a good portion of the fun is motion fun because there's other things oh we, there's also a petting zoo so we got to we got to play with the animals so that was nice fun. i'm animals. guessing that this person is attractive she is yep yeah okay. that's all that's all i needed okay <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that has anything to do with her motion sickness though it does oh yeah the, okay. the more beautiful Hashtag feminism. Yeah, the more beautiful <laughs> you are. And I didn't know it was a girl. Mm. I just knew that they were attractive. Yeah. Because the more attractive you are, the more you're allowed to get away with by the people around you. So even if somebody really kind of wanted to ride some rides, mm. the more attractive you are, the less likely they are going to care about the rides. And like really like, presence. you know, press the subject. Right. You know, mm. Like I really want to ride. Like these if rides. me and you went to the fair. And you really wanted to ride some rides, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, you know, I actually, I kind of get a little messed up in the Disney cups. Yeah, and then your and balls you'd be will like, get busted all right, to well, cool. You want to just hang out in line with me and chat while I go ride this ride? Like, I can't imagine you just being like, oh, well, then let's not ride any rides. No, because you would just I be wouldn't. like, what the shit, man? What the shit? But if I were a beautiful person, you were interested in, you'd be like, yeah. Let's go walk and do some stuff. Let's see some sights and have an interesting time. Mm, yep. That sounds accurate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Human psychology. So your 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 you favorite. That, huh? I have four degrees in that. Oh. Uh, you got like them black, while he was I earning the, his way. I got the, as a the black yellow belt. <laughs> I, got the, I got the red belt. I got two degrees mm-hmm. of white belt. Okay. Which is where you start. It's like yeah. white belt and then first degree white belt. Mm. Which is basically just like the guy that cleans up the dojo <laughs> after everybody's done running laps. So your your favorite fair ride? What would you say your favorite fair ride is? What what what, what is it? What is it that you have to? If you're going to the fair, yeah. you're going to be upset if you don't get a chance to participate in. Uh, I always did like the gravitron, which they didn't have at this fair. Mm, they didn't have it last time. Either. Yeah, which I always thought was weird because growing up. Uh, the fair that came through my hometown always had a gravitron. Yeah, it was the best way to throw Or whatever up. they might call it in wherever, whatever fair you go to. The best way to purge all the fair food is it's, to get on a gravitron. But they, It's, it's like a the giant gravitron, centrifuge. Yeah, the gravitron <laughs> typically has the best music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, or rock and roll roller coaster. Yeah. Which is the one where it's all... Whoosh. Right, I think I think this one is called the it, Himalayan or something like that. Yeah. I think it is. Also, yeah, really good really good music there. You can tell the DJ um, gets into it. Oh, yeah. In those, He's like, those if areas. I'm going to be riding... If I'm, Dealing all these pukey kids, gonna have a good time. Mm-hmm. Can't blame them. Yeah, are you drawing pukey kids right now? No, I'm drawing a gravitron. Oh, okay. So, which looks a lot like a spaceship. <laughs> it does. I think it's. I think it's meant to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gravitron. So, what you been up to the past couple weeks? Well. No interesting October stuff. Yeah. I, I really want to, but like most of the friends that I'm hanging out with down in my area now, they're they all work crazy chaotic schedules and like yeah. can't really go to anything at like eleven o'clock at night when everybody's getting off work. So right. and and I don't want to be that weirdo that like goes out to seasonal events by themselves and just kind of yeah. creeps around like creepy McCreepers in. <laughs> like Yeah, that's one thing I've I, never want to do is like, oh, I'm going to go to the fair by myself. No, that, yeah, that does not sound awful, right? That sounds like, like a good way to have people like eyeballing you and bringing their children in yeah. closer. Like, what's he doing here? All the, all the carnival barkers like looking at their, like counting up their inventory while, while you're around, you know? It's, I mean, it sounds like a great way to really refresh your depression. 
<laughs> yeah, it does. Like, like, let me yeah. just let me just give this ref this depression of mine a good old boost. Yeah, all these go to the fair by myself. Having a great time with other people. Yeah. I invited tons of people. Nobody came. Oh, you finished it? Yeah. We have almost none left. Well, you can have some of it. Almost none. All right, divvy it up. There you go. I wanted it right there by the mic. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> That way they know it's not uh, CG. It's not, it's not fake. That is real Spoo Monty. <laughs> Heavy uh, on the Spoo. <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh, it means whatever you want it to mean in right. the time frame and the context. Yes. You know, what are you thinking about? <laughs> Something gross, I bet. <laughs> are you guys much of wine drinkers? Do you like wines? You know, <sighs> dessert wines. Uh, I don't care for red. And I know I it's either. better for your heart Yeah, with the nitrates. So they claim. Because of the nitrates. Yeah. But I think it's just too dry and bitter. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like someone is slapping me on the inside of my face <laughs> when I drink it. I mean, there are definitely some wines that are better than others. But yeah, for the most part, it is, it's a bit too dry for me. Like, I guess with, with liquor and spirits, they are much more drier. You get that really dry alcohol taste. Mm -hmm. But you're supposed to, like, there's, you're not supposed to drink as much of it, drink it a little more slowly, or much, qu much more quickly. Mm -hmm. But with wine, you're actually supposed to sip and enjoy on wine, and with that, really, it's a, a drying effect on mm. your palate, and turns your teeth red, which is never a good look. Yeah. Now, I, I do enjoy a proper sangria, but mm -hmm. really, that's like Kool-Aid wine. <laughs> that's like wine made so that you can just drink the crap out of right it. or like a, like a and blush then munch on some fruit is, i feel it's kind of the same like a blush is always something that's going to taste nice and fruity and not overpower you with like bleh. Mm. you know with what with what bleh. what yeah i actually went to a wine tasting several years ago and that's where he found out the that term yeah <laughs> bleh. yeah what? it's an official <laughs> term you can look that up look that up um write that down uh, yeah, but I went to a wine tasting a long time ago with some friends, and, and it was, uh, it, it was one of those interesting things where it was several different shops in this, in this, like, shopping center, and, like, restaurants and stuff were having these wine tastings all at once, and, and you go through and you just have a cup, and you're like, yeah, fill it up, you drink it, and they had the buckets where you can spit in if you want, if you're one of those mm -hmm. dick people that acts like you know what you're talking about with wine, no one knows what you're talking about with wine, and, uh. Sommelier? Is, is Somalia. Somalia. No, Somalia. That's don't don't bring that up. That's awful. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. It was. It tasted terrible. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we went to one of those and, and that was where I you know, found like so many places had, had a lot of reds and very little whites and then like no blushes. And and I was like, oh, all this sucks except for the whites. Half of them suck. To my palate anyway. So yeah, it, it's it's tough with wine, you know. I mean, I feel like the the more like the red wines are viewed with a little more class involved. Like mm. red wines just seem classier yeah. than white wines. But UB40 had that song about it. Mm -hmm. Who? Red red wine. Yeah, you make oh, me yeah. feel so fine. Yeah. yeah, that's all I can sing. That's I think that's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's the whole song. Yeah, mostly. Good. <laughs> Good, good. We got that cleared yeah. up. But yeah, it is it is a little more pinky out, a little more you know classy. Uh -huh. You have to be uh -huh. uh, more of a more in control of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be more in control of yourself when you drink red wine because you're constantly mindful of like this will stain oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like there is nothing in the universe <laughs> that I can't stain with a splash of red wine. So, like, when you're drinking it, you always have to be a little more mindful. Yeah. Like, I can't Don't get smell it. can't get too drunk. Which <laughs> means you are able to get that much more drunk because you are being careful and you trick yourself into thinking you're not that drunk. Oh, that's deep. Right? That's, that's layered. Like, like a, like like a tangelo. Or, a, you're welcome. or an ogre. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what so, have you been up to? Well, um... I've been uh, doing nothing. I'm personally pretty excited. We uh, we we managed to do a little bit of upgrading here. Yeah. Um. So you'll notice there's not a lot of junk all over the table. Yeah, we don't have microphones more, in our faces right now. A little more freedom. I can touch Jason's face. 
without. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that uh, right doing the episode at, at, at in your basement, you know, we we learned that with this one particular microphone, we could pick us all up pretty well. Yep. Your basement kind of, you know, wreak havoc on the on the audio, but too yes. open, and we were too far from the mic. Yeah. But yep. but this setup seems to be working. But if you turn the volume well. up to like sixty five or whatever, mm -hmm. like you can hear us. Yeah, and, and really... the air conditioner. And, uh, so <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of background noise. Yeah. This right here, I feel like we've we've got a pretty good idea of how to dampen yeah. the noise. So it's nice. It's nice to have mm -hmm. that freedom, not like whacking stuff and making a whole bunch of noise. Yeah, because yeah, what was what did we have? In the very first episode, the very first episode, we had obviously there was no video, so they didn't yeah. have any clue about how horribly beautiful we were. Right. No. Uh, uh, you can sort of see our very first video was with the old setup, uh, with the, like the plastic table that we had. Yep. No, and, none of this. Uh, none of this here. Yeah. We had. Did we? It was just bare walls at the time. Bare right? walls. We eventually put the sheets, and then we added the the the. Sound dampening foam. Right. Yep. We lied everybody and said it was a different room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, we got this new table. Yeah. Um, you got this from the Goodwill, right? Yep. Like specifically for yeah. the, the I studio. Yeah. I bought this for this show. We got the the uh, the jargon, oh, the whiteboard, all of the crazy bullshit that we write up there, <laughs> so mm -hmm. that people can read yeah. it over and over again when we get boring. Yeah. Uh, we got the talkie box clock. It's never yep. actually told time. I mean, it's never telling was. time. It's not the right one. Yeah, I mean, it's telling a time. <laughs> <laughs> it is right twice a day, just like any. No, I change it clock. right before that. Okay, okay good, <laughs> good. I don't want it to be right. Yeah, we in that. I remember adding that uh, Velcro dartboard just for some color. Yeah, yep, just a splash of color. <laughs> mm -mm. I don't even know. I think you throw like little fuzzy balls. Yeah, it was little like Velcro little, fuzzy it was little balls. plastic balls that had Velcro strips around it. I have no idea where those are. Mm -mm. Yeah. Someone probably loaded them up into a Nerf gun and shot them at somebody by now. Yeah. Well, 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 now that we're moving into our second year of Talkie Box, mm -hmm. I think it might be time to do a little more. Uh, sprucing up yeah and we're always looking for feedback on uh -huh. what might not appear as to be as boring to you guys something uh, some other distractions for you so in let's, the background let's do some nostradamus work let's do some some stats and predicting okay all right one year from today mm -hmm. okay will there still be a talkie box justin oh, oh absolutely oh yeah all right yeah i agree i all feel right. like that the first year was <clears throat> the toughest one and it was it's pretty easy. It went, yeah, it went pretty well. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel like we from where we started one year ago to where we are now, we've definitely made a lot of improvements. Yeah. We've we've built up a lot more. We have a much larger fan base. So mm -hmm. thank you guys for watching and subscribing and I mean, that, that's tell all your friends to do that stuff. We too. have videos now. We like we've only been doing videos since episode eighteen. I think it was our first one. Yep. And so we went for quite a while just doing audio, and and we were still getting listeners. We were still getting people. We're checking this out, but now I feel like we've got even more thanks to that. You know, thanks everybody. So, um, what do you think? What do you think will be changed a year from now? Uh, I hope to have a, a fourth permanent uh, permanent speaker talent. Yeah, uh, and you know, like like Justin said, we we're, we're it was going to be tech, and then he didn't show up. So now I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure he'll come back. Yeah, well, yeah, he'll be back. Um, All of his stuff's at home. <laughs> but if you're, you know, like like just said, we're gonna we're gonna change this up a little bit. Yeah. Um, change up the studio. Yeah. I, I really I really enjoyed the way the 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 couch setup and stuff that we had. Yeah, I would place. definitely love to get a couch mm -hmm. and uh, have like maybe a little coffee table, do a little, a little coffee talk. Yeah. It's just much more comfortable too, I think. Right. Being able to lean back and well, if we had a proper studio, like when we went to, uh, you know, uh, CNN, go to we went to CNN and mm -hmm. snuck around there in the middle of the night. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, they had like their their table area for like the proper like presentation, like yeah. behind the desk kind of thing, and then they could just pff, swivel the camera. And they had like a whole nother yeah studio yeah. set up that was all comfy couches mm -hmm. and like. You know, Tonight Show style. Right. Uh, so that way they could do a segment where, like, we're talking important news, mm -hmm. and then like, oh, let's do a more of a, a living style, a like puff leisure piece. puff yeah. piece kind of thing. Let's talk to this actress about their new. Right. And rather than having them sit behind a desk, like, 
you can switch over to the other yeah. the other shot. Now that's some fancy shit. Of course, that's CNN. You know. Yeah. It's also you have somebody working the camera. <laughs> yeah. Which we've we've never had. We've never had somebody who like. Nope. Hmm. Nope. <sighs> That's they either want to be a part of the action, or they don't want to do anything yeah, at all. That's another thing that I really want. I'm, I'm really hoping for this year is t, uh, you know we, we've been doing this single camera thing since we started doing videos, yep. and what I want to do is add more cameras so we can get you know different shots. So it's not just you know a boring like one static shot the whole time. Yes. Not that you know it's not great seeing all of us at once, but you know it'd be cool to get a close up of of Jason or Justin or me or whoever. Are you sure? Any, I mean, to get a close up, not all of them, but. Okay. Um, <sighs> I'd like to. I definitely like to have that. I'd like to have a crew. That'd be awesome. Ooh. Yeah, I think you gotta pay Ooh. a crew though. Yeah, I'll pay them in cookies. Unless you no, guys want to pay us, <laughs> you guys could pay us and increase our production value and make this much more enjoyable. Yeah. And that's another thing that we've we've always talked about is getting away. From, you know, not just from having all these mics in our faces, but having you know, like the the lapel mics. <laughs> just pour it. <Jesus. laughs> Lapel mics, the freedom yeah. to move about the cabin, Woo, right. you know, do a little more craziness, uh -huh. a little more skit. And that would help us to actually be some able to man do... man on the street action. Yeah, some more stuff outside of just this show. Um, I don't think that'd be bad. Yeah. We just, should do that. You know, different equipment. Mm -hmm. it's, I'd actually like to get away from having the headphones on all the time. Yeah. yeah I've been wanting to do, like, a Whose Line Is It Anyway improv-style show mm -hmm. for a really long time, but... Yeah. You know, A, you guys aren't funny, so I would need, like, different people for that. Yeah. And then we'd need the lapel mics, B. Yep. <laughs> so that, you know, we're not just having to project towards the big old shotgun mic here. Right. Though projecting yeah. at the shotgun mic is not too bad at this point, yeah. I would say. It's working out. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would also like to be able to, and this this is uh, partially on me, um, but, you know, we, we shoot this show on Tuesdays. Yep. And then the earliest that it typically gets actually available to the public is like Sunday. Yeah. Afterwards. And that's that's because, you know, I, I do the editing and then I have to go somewhere else to upload it because the internet here is atrocious. Uh, it would take me I think last time I, I attempted to, to upload something to YouTube here just to just to see how long it would take with the current video resolution that we use. It's going to take 46 hours. Woo! Uh, so with, it would have taken just as long. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and it would have bogged down the internet for everybody else in, in, in the place. Everybody gets pissed. Yeah. Netflix they stop the down. video. Yeah. So. Or they just unplug the router and plug <laughs> it back in, and then uh, you got to start all over yeah. again. So, so I, I don't currently know a better way to do things with, without just having to go off-site to get it uploaded. But, you know, typically I'll do the audio the night of that we shoot it. Uh, I'll, I'll edit the video the next day and then go and upload it the day after that. And then it's up, you know, then it gets to Brian and Brian has to, you know, do some minor edits here and there and then actually, you know, publish it on YouTube. Yeah. So, Watch it for content. Make sure that like, you know, yeah. it's, it's not a boring show, right. like a one year anniversary snoozer where <laughs> we don't have any really good jokes and we're right. just sort of talking about the past and talking about the future. All the stuff we've learned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the, the times loves we've laughed, the loves we've lost, yeah. the times we've cried. Like oh. that time, yeah, <laughs> just like that. So that that's something I, I I really hope for in the future is to to kind of streamline the process. Yeah, and get things uh, a little better. Yeah. All right. Well, we've talked a little bit about the past of Talkie Box, a little bit about the future of Talkie Box. So why don't yeah, we talk just about the present of Talkie Box? Let's dive right into some talkie topics, the, I think. The ghost of Talkie Box present. Exactly. Mm. So I've been watching this television program recently. Yeah. Called The Orville. Have you guys heard about this television program? Yeah, the yeah Orville? it's uh, got the family guy. Yeah, it does have the family guy. It's a show by Seth MacFarlane. Mm -hmm. um, and it is on Fox. And I, for one, am very surprised that they have not been sued yet. Uh, but I'm not disappointed by it. Sued by who? Uh, probably Gene Roddenberry's estate. Um, has a lot of Star Trek elements and, and like featuresque sort of things. It's parody to the point of like, <laughs> like is this uh, really just a shout out? Like, yeah. or is it parody? And, and I feel like, you know, maybe they just don't hate it. 
Yeah, I mean, have, have you watched the show? Yeah, it's it's really. It, I thought it was going to be way campier than it is, and a lot of the jokes are actually very referency Family Guy style kind of yep. camp yeah. jokes. But I feel like the show itself has a decent amount of heart. It and does, has, and has some good acting. All, all I've seen is a partial episode at your house, uh, right before we shot that episode from yeah. your basement. And and I noticed that it wasn't you know for being Seth MacFarlane it wasn't over the top comedy like yeah. it seemed to be a, a sci fi show with comedy elements yeah it was it wasn't joke after bit after gag after right. joke after bit yeah. after gag it, they had you know gags here and there and a, and a bit now and again but for the most part they they stuck to a plot and a storyline and you know cohesive yeah. storyline you're able to follow all right we're pushing story and then we are including jokes right not yeah. we're pushing jokes and including story yeah which so is I mean, what more or less family guy yes is. Yeah. which is exactly but what family guy i feel like it's it's pretty well done mm -hmm. and it has a good production value for a first season of a show like this um and it's it's interesting it's 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 a fun watch yeah so i definitely recommend it um they've they've had a few stars on the show mm -hmm. we had um Charlie Theron was on an episode not too long oh, ago. Wow. Yeah, um, it's worth a watch. Which I guess I mean she was in the Million Ways to Die in the West, right? I believe she was. Yes. Yeah. So you know she has that relationship with Seth Farland, mm -hmm. Seth MacFarlane. So they've done some working together. Yeah. Yep. So that's cool. Yep. Yeah. There's, he probably, there's, he, he probably I, has the hots for. Her. I wouldn't be surprised. I have Who the doesn't? hots for. Her? <laughs> right. Did I, did I talk about Big Mouth on the on the show last time? I feel like we mentioned it. I oh, feel like God. I wasn't so, here. No. Was I here? The last time, the last show we had was in his basement. Oh, for real? Up, yeah. That one that I got like halfway here and, and no, my car started acting we, up? No, we ended up uh, shooting something else that will eventually be on YouTube. Eventually. <laughs> oh, and y'all aren't going to tell me about it because you want I'll me to be a surprise? Later. I mean, it, we're not going to talk about it on the show. It's going to be a surprise for them unless yeah. it goes up first, in which case they'll look back at this and be like, why wouldn't they just say something? It's really yeah, weird. Yeah. It already, it's already up. We know what it is. Yeah. Well, then so it's, then it's time an will Easter tell. egg. <laughs> it's an Easter egg for our viewers. That's yeah. fine. I don't, only time yeah, will tell. I don't really care. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> Big Mouth is a show that's on Netflix. It's a Netflix original show from uh, Nick Kroll, John Mulaney, two funny guys. You guys talked about their show, Oh, Hello. Mm -hmm. um, oh, hello. Yeah. And it, it's... Broadway. It's an it's a, uh, animated show about uh, kids in middle school dealing with like puberty and, and the different things that kids go through. Which it's at first hilarious. I thought... hilarious. At first I thought... This seems like a, like a bit of an edgy subject. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like it seems like they could they could get yeah. themselves into some trouble. Not because it's like things that you're not supposed to talk about, but just because it's things you're not supposed to talk about in the context involving of children. Yeah. yeah, like But that's when those things happen. It <laughs> is. It's not it's it's very relatable, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, it's not something they else. could have done live action. <laughs> but it is a cartoon. It's adults playing these parts. Like they get away with it. They get away with and it, and it, it's it's relatable. Yeah. But at the same time, it is very edgy in the it is. grand scheme of and things. It's, it's very funny. And being on Netflix, they can go they can go balls to the wall with it, and and do and say virtually anything they want, and they do. I bet they do. Um, Especially Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. Yeah, love those guys. And and they both do multiple voices throughout. So nice. Um, but it, it's a it's a really funny show, and uh, <clears throat> there's something I was gonna say, but I don't remember what it was now. Hmm. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. So it's a it's a coming of age tale, middle right. school. It's got a whole bunch of famous people that. Uh, yep. It's got uh, Kristen Bell is in it. Nathan Fillion has been in it. Um, what is it? Fred Armisen, Maya Rudolph, um, Jenny Slate. So, you know, there's a, a bunch of names that maybe you don't necessarily. Put them to the and all the basic, themes are coming of age, like like first cubes, yeah, that kind of stuff. That that's I think in the last episode is is where that really. Goes uh, of in. course it is. Um, but there's the stuff ten, writes there's, itself. Yeah, there's ten episodes. <laughs> in, uh, there's a character called the Hormone Monster, which uh, you know shows up once someone hits puberty, or the Hormone Monstress for for the girls. Um, but it deals with uh, Hashtag girls, feminism. Yeah, it deals with girls' first period. Um, you know. Uh, all kind like everything you can think of from yeah. when you were in middle school and all the awkward bullshit you went through. Oh, the uh, subject whether you're matter. male or female, um, it's it's in there. Just already in the first season, pretty much. Um, even it even touches on divorce and stuff like that. So wow, it, it gets into some deep stuff. But 
more heart. Does it have some, a little little heart a little in there? A little bit. A little bit of heart. <laughs> but, a little heart. A little heart. A little salt. But, but for the most, heart. it's just uh, making fun of uh, awkward and tragic experiences yes. that go on during uh, pre-adolescence. Right, and and <laughs> dealing with kids who who they think they're grown up. You know, like they like, oh, we're having a grown up. Like in the, uh, I believe the very first episode, they talk about like these the two main characters, like we are having a grown up conversation. Like, yes, it's very nice that we can have these adult conversations with one another. Boobs. And then, and then like <laughs> next thing the dude's like jerking it in the bed or something like that. Oh. So yeah, it. Good, good highbrow stuff. Yeah, it's, it gets a bit, uh, a bit vulgar. So I've been watching something does. on Netflix recently. Oh, yeah? What's that? Well, I finished uh, season three of Narcos, which I really enjoy. I've not seen that. Uh, Narcos. The first two seasons are about the, uh, the killing of Pablo Escobar mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, Median cartel. The taking Medellin. down of the Medellin cartel. Medellin. And then the third season was about the Cali cartel rising up to power in the wake of Pablo Escobar basically okay. losing all of his routes and everything. Cali just basically stepped up and took all of that stuff. And it's got amazing actors. I I really enjoy the the historical mm -hmm. aspect of it, like to be entertained yeah. while you're learning um, right. I've also been watching uh, something similar to that called uh, Mind Hunter. I was just about Mind to talk Hunter. about that. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard great things. Yeah, I've, 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 I've begun seen the, the first preview. season. How is it? It's it's good. Um, I've heard it takes things a little slow. It takes things a little slow, and good. and because they are touching on such horrible, mm -hmm. dark subject matter, it. It honestly, it it kind of comes in on a light approach. Okay. Uh, I guess because they just don't want to drown you in all the blood right. and gore and darkness. So yeah, they. From, so from what I've heard, it's about uh, the FBI at a time when people really didn't trust the government. Uh, like, like shortly after Vietnam. Summer of Sam, basically yeah. that that time and then, period. And then these these government agents are are going to start working on like really delving into the psyches of serial killers mm -hmm. right because they don't know how to predict those patterns yeah. like they've never considered where that aspect of criminality comes from mm -hmm. and even how long it's been going on and, and they get a lot into sociology and psychology behind criminality yeah. and like is it basically a symptom of of our society and how like our society is slowly corrupting mm. and you know the family bonds and stuff are breaking down and like people being able to relate to one another and the amount of anxiety in public scenarios and stuff that is built up within the an individual right how all of that culminates within our society to these like manifestations of just people being completely unable to empathize like sociopaths that mm -hmm. they'll live their life basically mimicking and mirroring everything that they see so that they can fit in and seem absolutely normal right but on the inside they can't understand like why people aren't just killing each other on a daily basis you know like oh you know i don't like that suit and that tie together like that guy should really yeah. be you know drawn and quartered do you find this relatable <laughs> to a degree i'd like to think that every human being finds it relatable to a degree because we all have our inner demons i would agree but that might just be me hoping <laughs> that, <laughs> that, I'm, that i'm not a uh, serial killer that you're right. not an anomaly um, but, you know, I watch it, and I've actually read a lot uh, on serial killers before this show, mm. for no particular reason, and um, I legitimately, I do actually have a lot of commonalities. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. To a, to a scary degree. If, if y'all have ever, I don't really want to go into them, because I got friends watching <laughs> and stuff, and I swear I'm not going to kill anybody that you guys know. So... <laughs> So here's. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that leads us to our first talkie box poll: Is Jason a serial killer? Comment below. <laughs> I mean, maybe, right? You're not sure. You're not. They're not sure. Here's your options: Yes, no, not yet. 
Let's kill him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? But yeah, a lot of a lot of the symptoms, you know, like um, abandonment issues mm -hmm. from a, a paternal figure, you know, like a domineering maternal influence, uh, different other stuff that is not light enough to be talked about on our show, but. <laughs> You know, right. just random. It, it's definitely going to be the, the next show I start watching on Netflix, I think. Once I finish, I'm watching one called Dark Matter right now, which is a sci-fi Is that uh, any good? Show. I've seen it. I love it. I've seen, really enjoyed I've it. I've seen all of it. Yeah, I'm on the la the, the most recent season now. I feel like it's it's basically like a an even darker version of Firefly. It's like Firefly, yeah. but like, like a little more... Evil, a little more it, malicious. It is. It's definitely I like the space. Like, space I do too, shows. Yeah. Those are good, good and times. The, the thing I actually enjoy about it is that it, there doesn't seem to be a sci-fi topic in the show that, or that a sci-fi topic that this show isn't willing to try out. Um, such as like explain alternate universes, okay, uh, temporal loops, pocket universes, uh, cloning, um, memory transfer, memory transfer, um, Rick and Morty. Uh, they they haven't dealt with aliens, I don't think. Not quite to the level um, of Rick and Morty. Yeah, because uh, they are trying to, you know, they have a a certain amount of physics that right. they need to keep to. Um, but artificial intelligence um, and and like androids and stuff like that. So it 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 does a lot, and and I always feel every time I watch an episode, I feel like I mean, the episodes are only forty five minutes long, but I I always feel like wow this this episode seems to be like going on a long time and I, and I don't mean that in a bad way it's not like oh when's this going to end it's like wow like I feel like I've seen so much like you're in getting each a lot episode of, they yeah. push a lot of plot like yeah, quickly they really like, do. there's no wasted scenes right like all their transitions are basically like boop boop this is going on Pfft, this is the resolution yeah. of that Pfft, this is going on now Pfft, this is the resolution and it's really impressive when you when you're like okay we've gotten to the end of this story and this is going to be the correct no there's more going on okay go on Let's that's go. awesome I'll have to check it out. And I'm also kind Write of that down. kind of uh, hot for the android. I yeah. kind of have a thing for the android. That doesn't pretty surprise cool. me. The, the actress That's because I'm a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that actress in one other thing in a show called Lost Girl that I also watched on Netflix. And she was, she was very name? good on that. I, I cannot remember her name right now. Uh, but she played uh, a doctor on, on Lost Girl. She was a main character. But um, I've, I've seen a lot of human beings try to play... You know, androids and artificial yeah. intelligence. And now I'm going to give it to Brent Spiner as my OG. Uh, <laughs> OG. I mean, Data. Data, I yeah. mean, he, I feel like, I don't I don't know where you, you can't be a method actor, right? Because who are you going to go to to pick up the method? So yeah. you basically just have to take a stab at it based on like sci-fi movies and stuff. Right. But I feel like Data did a really good job. He Brent did Spiner did a job, yes. great job playing an android. Mm. She's right behind him. She really is. Um, I, What's her name? Uh, Why don't you look it up? On the show, the character name is yes. Android. Or the Android. She's oh. blonde, she's British, and that's she's her picture. British. She's not British? Uh -uh. Oh. I, most of the people on that show are Canadian. Or maybe she's British Canadian. Maybe you're British Canadian. <laughs> then I wouldn't be a serial killer. That's not necessarily true. No. Not necessarily true, but <laughs> Canada has a lot less crazy no. people than we do. A lot less people? They have a lot less people, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, she looks androidy. She looks like, like she could android and, it up. And it's it's a really cool concept. And and I don't. I mean, her name is uh, uh, Zoe Palmer. Zoe Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Zoe Palmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the name that's I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like she, the way she plays the character is is it's uh, an android. Uh, it's it's unlike Data's, and Data was very. Um, like he was reading from a dictionary almost. Like he didn't use contractions. And he was, it was very like clear that this is an android, and he is an android. Mm -hmm. I He's like an early version. I had been yeah. checking the atmosphere on the planet. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> With her, um, the, like she speaks in a way that's very android, but she, her mannerisms tend to be more humanish. And it's because and, she has like an upload that is actually to right. to mimic well, and observe yeah. these human yeah. uh, hmm. this humanisms, so that right. she can fit in better. Yep. And then there's even plot line that goes along with even farther, even that further kind of to that upgrade. And so it's, and she does a fantastic job of it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had first seen her in Lost, in not Lost, in uh, Dark Matter.
And then I saw her in Lost in Lost Girl, and and I I was like, wow, this is she's very good at playing these different roles. And I'm very I'm very impressed with her. So shout out to Zoe Palmer. Yeah, Zoe on Palmer. Our, she definitely watches. Right? Hashtag Zoe one. Palmer. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Brian. Hashtag Zoe Palmer. At, yeah. at her or something. I don't yeah, know let's add her. At Zoe at, Palmer. At Zoe Palmer. <laughs> POTUS. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we would get blocked right away. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'd be all over the North Korea ban waves. That's that's enough. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna. Stop. We just got blocked. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure our power is getting shut off right now. <laughs> yep. But uh, they have a live feed. Yeah, I've, I've always been a, re- a sci-fi guy. Like, I've oh yeah, I really I enjoy space stuff and and other things. I was actually watching. Did you ever see the movie Cube? I have meant to watch it. I saw it was one of the uh, the new releases, right. I, and I wanted to watch I've, it. I'd seen it years and years ago, and I watched it again last night, I believe. Isn't it like um, a bunch of people trapped in a room in a cube, and then like every room that they go into is like a, another trap? Some some of the rooms are trapped, some of them are not. And, and it's basically them trying to figure out which rooms are trapped, and then how to get out of the cube. And, it, and it's, it's, a, it's like a psychological thriller. It's like Saw in Space. Sort of. But not necessarily in space. It's not necessarily in space. Not necessarily. Could be underwater. Wink, wink. Possibly. They they don't go into it. Yeah. They, like they don't they don't tell you definitively where where it's going on. Hmm. But but then then they made a second one, which is the one I fell asleep watching last night, which is called uh, Cube Two Hypercube, which adds. Uh, electric. Time into it. <laughs> electric hypercube. <laughs> now, see, you know, I feel like there are some movies mm-hmm. that. Should get sequels mm-hmm. that need sequels. I feel like there are other movies that could have sequels. Then I feel there are movies that have absolutely no business having sequels, and somehow they still get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, um, I was just scrolling through my my HBO, and I came across American Psycho. Yeah, great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Love that movie. Introduced me to Christian Bale. Yeah, did not think that movie would need a sequel. But apparently, I got one. They made a sequel. Okay, it was called American Cycle Two, American Psycho Two, All American Girl, starring Mila Kunis. Really? Yes, uh, she was um, from Family Guy. Yeah, but <laughs> and, she, and plays, she plays. She plays. She plays a a young girl who was being babysat by one of Bateman's last victims. Patrick Bateman's last victims, and then she killed Patrick Bateman, and then ran off and hide and made it her mission in life to catch serial killers, and she killed a whole bunch of people to make that happen. Now, did did it was uh, Christian Bale in it? He was not. So it didn't show her killing him. No. It's just like, by the way, that's what happened to him. Yeah, more or less. Like uh. that, this is what happened to him, and now she is studying serial killers. But if people get in her way, she's going to kill him. All right. It was a very it it, it had a completely different tone mm-hmm. than American Psycho. Did it, it seem like a Dextery kind of spin? It like somebody like, watched two seasons of Dexter and was like, "Ooh." <laughs> it felt like that that late '90s, early 2000 teen college movie. Like you ever seen the movie uh, Dead Man on Campus? No. Yeah. With Mark Paul Gloss Glossler Gossler. Yeah. And uh, a few other people in there uh, kind of had a similar feel to that. Like mm-hmm. it's it was a dark comedy, but okay. it did not. It didn't feel like a sequel to American Psycho. Right. It was completely unnecessary. I feel like they could have made any movie. Yeah. They could have given it any title and still had the same plot. But they're just like, let's just tack it on. It's this a shitty movie. movie. Let's tie it to something that was decent at one time. Yeah. Maybe we'll still get some hits. Yes. And, uh, and I watched the whole before, thing, and honestly, I... American I, Psycho 3, Talkie Box. <laughs> Check it out, guys. Jason's plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, I mean, it actually ended up not being a terrible movie. I mean, you're watching, and you're just like, oh, come on. Right. Oh, come on. You get to the end, you're like, all right, all right. Not terrible, but still not American Psycho. And right. I feel like they do that a lot now, and uh, creating sequels to movies that have no business getting sequels. Did you ever see Donnie Darko? I did. Did you ever see S. Darko? Nope. Yeah. That's what so Donnie Darko 
Another very, fantastic movie. Very strange it's, movie. It's a it's, intellectual movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you if you don't like thinking during movies, it's not a movie right. for you. I've seen a lot of it's, people complain that like, oh, it's just too convoluted and right. it's, I don't know where it's going. And, uh, it's it's hard to follow. Yeah. But you got to care enough to do. Yeah, and it introduced us to to Jake Gyllenhaal. It was the first thing I ever saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then also, and then, um, what is her name? Jenna. Uh, Jenna Malone. Jenna Malone. Yeah. And then, but he also had Drew Barrymore, Noah Wiley from ER, and Patrick that, Swayze. Patrick Swayze was wasn't in it. Jillian Hall's sister in that as well. Yeah, Maggie, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Hall. as as his sister. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, years later, they made a movie called S Darko, based uh, focused around his sister Samantha, the younger girl, the younger sister in the in played in by Maggie Gyllenhaal. Hall? Uh, no, uh, it was the younger one. Okay. Um, they couldn't book Maggie Gyllenhaal for the sequel, right? But they did, they got the actual girl. <laughs> okay. Um, but the the movie was made like ten years later, and so it takes place ten years later. And she's like, and it's it's has almost nothing to do with Donnie Darko except it's the same damn girl. And she's she now she's having weird hallucinations and like traveling the the Southwest and uh, getting into weird shenanigans. There's no reason oh, for the movie Darko. to even be made. It was just this weird nonsense bullshit. Yep. I, th- I think the original Donnie Darko was more about uh, paradoxes and parallels mm-hmm. and stuff, and, and was basically about like him going through all of the motions that would have been his life or whatever, all the way up to the point where he realizes what's going on and he has to decide, yeah. like, do I live... And all of these other people die, or do I just accept the fate that has befallen me, yeah. and then life can go on as it should? And as you watch the end, you, you know his decision. decision yeah. yeah, but you know, I feel like there's there are those movies that make sequels that they don't need, and then those movies that make sequels that they just kind of build on, uh, just kind of like basic instinct themes, like. To give you an example, think about um, uh, Beaver shots. Uh, <laughs> it's a basic instinct. That's a... Well, I was kind of going there. Um, now I can't even remember the name of the damn movie. Thanks Ooh. a lot. I do really. Um, all right, what about uh, Wild Things? All right, okay. so Wild Things, the first movie was a good movie. Yeah, and they had a pretty uh, steamy sex scene. Yeah, that was with what, uh, Nev Campbell, Denise Richards, and Nev Campbell, the Denise guy. Richards, and uh, Matt Dillon. Yeah, that's okay. his name. Yeah. And uh, so th- when they came out with a sequel for One Wild Things, it was. Almost straight up softcore porn because they just took <laughs> right. that one thing and like, all right, well, um, everybody liked it, and I'm pretty sure they liked it for this scene. Yeah. So we're just gonna make the second one, you know, softcore porn. Just an hour uh, and, and a half three way. Didn't right. they do the same thing with Cruel Intentions? Cru- that's the that's the one I was thinking. Yeah. Of. Cruel Intentions. The first one was good. Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan Felipe. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Sarah Michelle Geller. That's dangerous uh, liaisons, isn't it? Reese Witherspoon. What? Cruel Intentions wasn't that a that was a remake of a movie from you like might be right. the eighties or the seventies yeah. or something yeah. which I think was Dangerous Liaisons. But. Yeah, so you know it's all about um, this guy trying to get this girl mm. for a bet and uh, a whole bunch of crazy stuff happens yeah. and then Cruel Intentions two actually has a pretty big star in it but was not a big star at the time. Um, Amy Adams was actually played Sarah Michelle Gell's Keller, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller's character <laughs> in Cruel Intentions two, okay. and it was also it was essentially just softcore porn, right? Like they just you know naked twins in the shower. They just built on people's basic yeah. you know desires and like all right, well we're gonna be, make this movie. We might as well play and cater to that thing that mm-hmm. helped make this first one so popular. Right. Cruel Intentions one, great movie. Cruel Intentions two. Great boobs. <laughs> yeah. So that's a shame. It is. When, when capitalism affects art in yeah. such a way that uh, art is not really yeah. really a part of the project anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, all right, well, what's our message? You know, what what's our story? Boobs are great. All right. All right Why cool. don't we just make porn? You know, we could... <laughs> the production, we you know, could drop the production what way What I love about this is that 
I love the the, the last three sentences you said because it's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just make porn? <laughs> Why don't we just make porn? I mean, Talkie Box would be going places by now. Yeah. A year of making porn? I mean, not the three of us, obviously. Uh, no one wants to see the porn with us. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, Talkie Box... The name has different implications. <laughs> Pointy box. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> it's a talkie box. Uh, it's the talkie yeah, box. Oh, gross. All right. gross. So All what right. did you learn today, Dave? Uh, here's what I learned this year. All right, tell me. Uh, it's we, gonna got, be, we ain't got that much show. Yeah, we got a lot of friends that have shown up once. <laughs> a lot of friends that have shown up once, yeah. But we appreciate every one of them that came out. Well, Absolutely. you've got a lot of friends that showed up once. Hey. They can be your friends, too. They could be my friends, but they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, I put it out there. What did you learn this year? What did I learn this year? Uh, let's see. Uh, I learned that one of my closest and, and dearest friends uh, grew up a poor black peanut farmer. <laughs> he uh, sure did. I found that out. and Among uh, many other things. Uh, many, many other things. Among many other lies. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I learned that uh, we cannot get a permanent fourth person on the show. I mean, we, we got really close. Maybe we will. Maybe we, one day. Yeah. Maybe one day. Year two. Year two. Yeah. Jason? Um, I learned that uh, Spumante <laughs> is Italian for shitty wine. <laughs> hey, uh, ciao. What's that? Uh, spumante? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drinking the spumante? Oh, that comes out of my butt. <laughs> it really wasn't too bad. Yeah. No, it wasn't horrible. High for brow. eight bucks? For, for, for eight yeah. bucks? Yeah. And like seven swallows? <laughs> Next year I'll move it up. <laughs> <laughs> eight I'll bucks move. and seven yeah. swallows. What a bargain. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag eight, eight bucks and ask, seven swallows. What are the hashtags this time? <laughs> Is that the only one we got? <laughs> That's the only one I've written down so far. All right. All well, right. Well, thank you so much for Freezy being here with us for, for uh, this, this past year that we've had. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you guys uh, watching and listening and everything. Uh, and please like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Tell your friends. Mm -hmm. and, uh, tell your grandma. Yeah. Tell your grandma's friends. <laughs> tell yeah. the Uber driver. Yeah, they they want to get a phone call. They haven't I, had one in a long time. I know you're going to get drunk this weekend and call that Uber driver, which yeah. you should talk about instead of whatever awkward thing <laughs> y'all are going to talk about in the Uber ride. Talk about Talkie Box. That's right. And that'll just, now you're covered. Yep. You get in the Uber, and it's like, oh, God, he's going to talk to me. What are we going to talk about? Now and you as have we move a topic. Into the topic. And as we move into the holiday season, just you might you got to get onto your talkie products while they last. That's right, that's right. Talkie mugs, we have, talkie tops. Now, we sold out of this. Yeah. Uh, we sold out of this. I think we are getting another shipment in. Okay. Um, so you got to get it while it's hot. So you're you're yeah you're gonna have to jump on that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you don't get the giant brass plaque <laughs> that's like six thousand dollars, then at least get one of these hot commodity talkie box mugs right and then, here. And and it then does send mean us hot. pictures of you enjoying things out of your mug mm -hmm. or your Wearing shirt or whatever shirts. it is you get. You know, we would Waking up to a talkie box alarm, a yep. talkie clock, talkie clock. Yep. Well, that's it for. Uh, that's a year in the books. One year. One year in the books, and that's it for tonight. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Sign Good night, off. everybody.